I tell you an example. When I was young, I thought I was a girl. When I was a little boy, I'll never forget it. I said to my, I said to my dad, I went to my dad, and I said, Hey, dad, I think I really feel like I'm a, a, a girl. And he said, Wait, I got a cock. And I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> you got me. I only tell you that so you understand how hateful we were back then. <laughs> My father was hate. He also beat Hitler, but people are complicated. <laughs> Filthy pig of a father. <laughs> I was 
or whatever I gave people could have been married when I was a little kid. I go, I don't get it. So I'm better than everybody. <laughs> That's what makes a person good nowadays. Man, I got to change my act and shit because you got to be woke. <laughs> woke up. So we flew in from, uh, from Vegas. It was so fucking scary. Oh, I was going to tell you about the, yeah, the stewardess. <laughs> flight attendant, flight attendant. So the flight attendant says to you, now, if you go, uh, uh, if the plane crashes, uh, you're right beside the emergency exit, so would you mind, like, letting other people out and kind of helping out? And then you go, yes, I will do that. <laughs> I was going to ask you if I could do that. That's the funny thing. It's just me, I was after you. <laughs> Extra one and a half inches of leg and well worth it. After you, man. <laughs> Black, blue smoke racing down the two spots. <laughs> of course, in real life, I'd be kicking my mother. Get the fuck, you old whore. You got a full life. <laughs> I used to be on the TV. What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> They just try to make you feel better, you know. I'd never heard this one. I guess I'd, I'd blank out or something. I'd never listened. But they say now, they go, if the, the oxygen mask comes down, make sure to put it on your own self before you put it on your little child. And I was like, God damn, that was my plan. You have to fucking blank <laughs> But they obviously just do it to make you feel better, you know. Yes, you know what your seat is good for sitting on, but you know it's also a boat. <laughs> it's good as a boat. And then you try, oh. But you ever turn on a TV and it goes, hey, listen, a plane crashed in the Pacific today, but don't worry about it, everybody floating around on the boat. <laughs> Same with the, the emergency exit row, you know? It don't matter on account of that plane goes down 900 miles an hour. First of all, the location of that fucking window is going to be changing. <laughs> but secondly, you vaporize. <laughs> like, they show pictures. They'll take a camera and just put it on the plane because... They would never do with a car accident, with a plane accident. You go, God damn, I don't see any person. <laughs> because there are none. It's just a plane load of stuff. That's all it is. Ashes to ashes. Stuff to stuff. <laughs> and so they go on, and God damn, a lot of stuff in this plane. Holy crap. <laughs> we can't call it stuff. Call it remains. I <laughs> Now, the, the three people that have met this uh, horrific end, they have loved ones, you know? And the loved ones always want the remains, you know? To, for some closure, you know what I mean? They're like, God ah, damn, I can't get to sleep ever since Billy died in that plane crash. <sighs> That's all I can think of. If only I could see him. <laughs> Mm -hmm. If only I could imprint that image on my mind. <laughs> and every night before I went to sleep, I just think of that. <laughs> Finally, I've had this whole thing. <laughs> hey, you guys, now you're going to get your love. I mean, it's not, you know, they don't want to go, look, it's the strawberry blonde. Like, that reminds me of Agnes. Over there. Didn't you get her thigh bone early? Okay, let's reconstruct. They got no time. They go, come on, man, let's move. The daylight's burning. Hey, hey, listen, man. Uh, uh, I just found an ID card here 
It says, darn that dumb, 190 pounds. Shovel 190 pounds of stuff in a bag. <laughs> Greg Norm went to say and sent it to his mother. His mother went to say. Oh. Oh. Then my mother and dad said, ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> now, American Airlines ain't so bad after all. <laughs> Jeez, I don't remember Norm having three eyeballs. <laughs>
just in the same way that the fucking hell of the news has taken away all my empathy and all my feel of despair. Porn and pornography has, has taken my joy from me. I can no longer just lie down on top of a lady. Because <laughs> I've seen all this crazy shit. <laughs> Turns it bad. I stopped it, man. Because at, at the end, I was like, ah. I could always find something more. You know, that's the problem. Need more, just like any addiction, right? You gotta get more. This one can only take eight cocks of her ass. <laughs> the fuck? You're gonna be in the crew, why are you in the fucking business in the first place, man? Imbecile. 
moron. Remember when you were a kid, you'd see, they show you what that was, the actual meaning to it, like imbecile, 80 to 90 IQ, something like that. Moron, 70 to 80, everything, you know what I mean? Didn't cow poop. You know, I'm all the way down, you know? But they don't like me as they return. And what about context? The guy didn't mention the context in which I said. Here, this was what, this was, I'll tell you the context. The, the, I remember the line. It was, I love retards. <laughs> Is that worse than, you know I fucking hate worse than anybody? I mentally challenge people. You <laughs> can't stand African Americans, they make me sick. <laughs> so context, God, I need some. Love you, Lord! I love you too, buddy. It's our only hope. It's our only hope, pal, I love I'm sniffling a lot, and I feel, I get, I feel paranoid when I sniffle because I think you guys will think I'm on cocaine. <laughs> and also I'm paranoid from the cocaine. <laughs> but together, I'm really very paranoid. I'm not for myself. But one of you underneath your seat. I was thinking this with, uh, with uh, cocaine or crack, you know. That homeless people, you know, which I have always been um, cruel. It's not cruel. Yes, cruel. <laughs> cruel to by dismissing them. You know what I mean? Like, I got a homeless guy who lives next door to me. I mean, I got an apartment, but. <laughs> Just a coin flip. You know, I have an apartment. He has. Always lying down. That's the other difference. He's always horizontal. And I'm vertical and show that. But I'll walk by this motherfucker, right? And uh, he'll be like, hey, you got any spare change? I go, I got no fucking spare change. The dollars falling out my pocket. He's like, what about the dollars? I'm like, fuck it. Hey! They're for licorice. Just fucking, you know, you're. <laughs> Why don't you get a job? What do you think of that? Have you ever heard of one retarded than this? Why don't you get a job? I hear down at the city hall, they're looking for guys who piss and shit their pants all the time. And uh, scream about John D. Rockefeller at the top of the line. You'd be perfect, I tell you. It's absurd. But it was just a, a, a selfish thing for me, but I could not I pass them anymore. Because you know when you pass them, you've all done this. You know you pass them and you're with your friend, and uh, you're like, yeah, get a cheese sandwich in here, please, sir. First of all, they're the most polite people ever. I don't know. Who calls you sir in real life? Oh, my good sir, chief. I like when people call me chief. <laughs> I, feel, I pretend I don't hear, you know. Chief, could you help me, man? And I'm like, anybody cheese sandwich have with my buddy? But meanwhile, I feel the like evil that's coming up in my belly. I don't feel good. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just carry some money with me. Hundred dollar bills. And every time I meet my motherfucker, I give him a hundred dollar. Just one per day. I mean, per person. But anyways, I've done this for the past five years. I even spent like $5,200. It was the best $5,200 I ever spent because that evil shit. My mother should say, you don't want to give them money on account of they'll go buy crap with the money. But first of all, if you give a person money, that's their money. They do whatever the fuck they want with it. That's how it works. <laughs> you know, I mean, imagine if you had a job and you're fucking Well, you use that money. Just can't get some beef around it. 
You might want to check out that stove for Tom, too. Yeah, no, that's not how it works. He uses the run of the fucking room. That's what my mother said. She said, they'll, they'll spend it on crack. Don't do it. The, the compassionate thing to do is to give them food. You know what I mean? Like a sandwich. And I tried that, man. Let me tell you something. Go up to a, a homeless guy. He's horizontal, lying. You put a sandwich on his chest. And then he's like, hey, thanks, buddy. This will change everything. Appreciate it. It's a sandwich. But crap. Stand-up comedy is a 
most important thing in the whole world. There's a fucking problem right there. <laughs> because stand-up comedy is just a bunch of shit. <laughs> so, these guys get in, then they write articles. Now, you got to remember, the guy that's writing the article thinks stand-up comedy is the most important thing in the world. So that's why they would write articles about the stand-up comic is today's philosopher. Now, that's horseshit. <laughs> because there are modern-day philosophers who I would say are the modern-day philosophers. <laughs> You're a modern day philosopher. <laughs> a fucking genius that knows every philosophical. <laughs> and you read a thing going, God damn, I thought I was maybe one of the best. But it turns out this Bill Maher fella, <laughs> he got all figured out. God damn, I can't follow him. No, they're not important. But to the see to the person that thinks stand-up comedy is so important, they go, oh, they tell the truth. That's the stand-up comic's job, to tell the truth. And uh, any good stand-up comic will tell you that the job of a stand-up comic is to lie. <laughs> but they won. So I wrote some woke jokes. Yeah! I'm just going to find them for you and then we'll see if I have the courage to say them. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about this airplane ride. I was so. Oh, by the way, you know, and sometimes some people, I should have been so, uh, uh, you know, um, doctrinaire, uh, because some people do survive plane crashes, but, and this is God's little joke, if they do survive, they survive in the Andes. <laughs> it's like God saying, you know, I'm serious, you know, Let's let them wrestle with the idea of cannibalism. <laughs> and I'm against cannibalism. If you know any of my work, <laughs> you'll know that uh, I work tirelessly for the abolition of cannibalism in our society. <laughs> And I'm not going to use this as a bully pulp and try to fucking preach to you. You guys are adults. You've made up your mind on the subject of cannibalism. I'm not going to change it. I go for the young people. The young people. I travel all across this great country in this, the best of all possible worlds, and I tell the kids, I say, look, if, if you eat a guy in gym class, then maybe you think that's cool. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you, people will be talking about it for a long time. <laughs> but you got to think of the future. You know what I mean? You maybe want to get a job on Saturday Night Live or something like that. They find out you ain't a fucker. <laughs> Here's the problem with that. Because when they get on the mountain, they have to decide. It takes them so long, you know, 50, 60 days, and they it's too much and they got to eat, you know? Not the way to go about things. You should have everything planned in life, you know what I mean? You should have everything. You know? Like if I'm on an airplane, I don't care where we're going. If there's any slight turbulence, I go, I'm eating that fucker in 14 C. <laughs> Stop coming in, it looks delicious. <laughs> And as soon as we crashed in the Andes, I pull him behind a snowbank and nobody was looking. Ah! <laughs> We're be eating every day, four hours a And six days of pass, everybody else is gone to the ground. 
that dirty. I can't take it any longer. Where are the corpses? I'm like, oh, the corpses. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what happened in the corpses. There's a whole bunch of mountains over there behind the snowman. Probably a lot of meat on them if you still know. By the way, this city, what a remarkable comeback. Congratulations, they came to fucking win. It just blows my mind. God damn, America's great. I was here five years ago, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of fixer uppers, you know what I mean? <laughs> the pants pack has been absolutely incredible. It shows you that American exceptionalism is actually the truth now. <laughs> you know what people go, America is the greatest country in the world, you know? There's a reason that that's an objective. Like, you know, if somebody goes, Kenya is the greatest country in the world, you can bet that fart is from Kenya. <laughs> it's not like he's done anything, you know. <laughs> but I'm from Canada, you know? I would always go, Canada! Woo! 14 or 15 or 16, I would say. Yeah! <laughs> Top 15! Yeah! It's a good country, you know? <laughs> but you know, these countries feel so like they're, oh, we never go to war. Yeah, because fucking America's going to war for you, guys. <laughs> Pretty easy to be neutral, I mean, fucking buddy. Is it? <laughs> then they get mad. Canada got mad at the United States for going into fucking Iraq. They'd never agree with it, but you shut your fucking mouth. I agree. I remember Canada and Vietnam, you know what I mean? <laughs> Special next year, you know. And I had all my jokes, man. I had all my jokes, and uh, then I kept getting these. You go, Norm's irrelevant, you know. And I agree in a way because <laughs> I'll show you how irrelevant I am. I didn't know irrelevant was a, something you call a person. <laughs> I'm one of these old men that read the Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> Irrelevant to me is a you know a fact. You know? Like only time I ever heard it was like on Matlock and shit. You know? <laughs> Matlock would go, Your Honor, it's irrelevant. What are you talking about blenders and shit? Irrelevant. As a matter of fact, he's irrelevant. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. That's a bunch of you. A bunch of you last week, right? And we're talking about Billy Bush, right? And they say, yeah, Billy Bush, man, you know, can't come back, should he or shouldn't he? And then one of them goes, eh, who cares, it's like a Billy Bush, anybody can do that job. And this is the person with the view saying that. <laughs> Those irreplaceable people. <laughs>
Well, you got to understand the woke jokes is laughter is not the point. <laughs> <coughs> I'm one of these old irrelevant retards. <laughs> yeah, so in my special, I said, I love re- my, uh, fucking on my special, my stand up. I said, I love retards. Oh, that wasn't enough for them. Oh, still not sure. <laughs> this is why I love retards, I'll just tell you. <laughs> Retards are mentally retarded because I understand that word. Retarded it means it means to be arrested at a certain point of your development. No insult at all. I could say Down syndrome, but I don't want people to think I'm a doctor. <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah, I come to me, hey, Norm, can you hit my knee with a hammer? I'm not a doctor. <laughs> you believe it, that still happens? Look at that. <laughs> You went to your GPs. All right, I hit your knee with a hammer. Now you yeah. did. Just accept this. So he hits your knee with a hammer. Get on my knee! And the guy's like, excellent, excellent. Good for you. Exactly how you should be acting. Your knee is struck by a hammer. Your legs are now paralyzed. <laughs> hey, that's what I was trying. So this was the bit. I got to tell you the bit. Because I can't do it anymore. <laughs> this is a joke I couldn't do today. <laughs> now I said, the reason I love retail is because they're happy. And happiness is the only thing we want. You know what I mean? Don't we all want happiness? But when do you ever get it? Never. Like, once in a while, the most of your life is like, uh, uh, that. once in a while you get happy. Like me, and the longer you live, the more unhappy. Like, I'll be happy in the morning, I guess because that's when hope is, you know? So, I'll wake up, there's my temper pillow. That's the best purchase I ever made. <laughs> God damn my God. And then the sun comes to the crack of the bottom, and then my life also, it's all over me. Like, what the fuck? Why did I do that? What kind of fuck? <laughs> look at the mirror. I don't ever look at the mirror. Oh. I'm not talking physically, but you just look at the mirror at your own two eyes and you're like, <gasps> At that point, I would love to have my retired friend go, I like bananas! <laughs> they're yellow! God damn rice are yellow! What <laughs> say you and me go down and get ourselves a banana? <laughs> Happy. Mr. 
picture of uh, something that looks goldish, you know, and you're thrilled, like, ah, gold, gold, I tell ya. And uh, so I think that's what life is. <laughs> Now you gotta remember, 
Comedy has very little to do with laughter. <laughs> right now, folks, in this country, we have got kids, and I, I don't care what stripe you are, Republican, Democrat, we all have children, and we all know what the love of a child is. And this is not who we are as Americans, because I don't know if you know what's happening at the, at the south of the border, but right now, we have got children, some of them as young as two or three, being ripped from the arms the people who paid good money to rent them for the border crisis. <laughs> That is not who we are as Americans. If you rent the kid from the parents or from the cartel, you should get to keep that kid until you cross. A deal's a deal. It's a woke joke. Give me another one. <laughs> what really frightens me, folks, and I can't go to sleep and not think of it, is what would happen if terrorists got a hold of a dirty bomb and detonated it over a large American city? And 30 or 40 million Americans died on the spot and later an agonizing death from the radiation. How? tragic would that be? Because could you imagine the backlash against the innocent Muslims in this country? It would be absolutely horrific. <laughs> People believe it. 
and then boom. Abernathy and now Anderson. Abernathy would give me a pile of 
papers by the end of it. And if I can get that file down to about that by the end of the day, by God, that was good. And sometimes I'd get it down to about that, and that's what made me uh, next in line. So I thought it before Anderson showed up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that last part. You remember when I was saying I was creating life while I was talking to you? I don't know if you can change your mind around this, but the life I was creating kicked me. <laughs> I was to have the corner eyes. <laughs> Abernathy and I had had many lunches. Sure, bye. Promises were made. But that day that Anderson showed up, I knew. Anyway, what did we learn from this play? Lose <laughs> perspective sometimes. What really is important is not important. Oh, my God. I'm going to do some jokes also. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So I was in a car. I was in, uh, I was in uh, Port, uh, Portland, which is very, very progressive, right? So I get in a car. Yeah, right. Yeah, right? And all I can talk about is how progressive they are in Portland and things like We're not racist, you know? That's something we've never had. I'm like, no, just, no we're not racist. And then I noticed as I was going through Portland, everybody's white. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that, I go, listen, you know, you say I'm not racist and everything, but, uh, you know, that's not that hard if there's no black people living in the entire town. To which he replies, we got our share. I'm like, whoa! Why are cabbies racist? I never understood that. Here's why I think cabbies are racist. You know, because you ever get in a cab, every motherfucking dime is racist. Now, if you're a cab and you're not racist, I apologize. But I've been in so many cabs. And you know, I used to live like a fucking suburb a long way away. So if I didn't get a cab and you know, I had a hitchhike and a secret gate, I would pick me up in the <laughs> station wagon with some child seats in the back and offer me warm beer. So I wanted to get home as a young man and my parents lived in the suburbs. So now this guy's racist. So what do I, it's like the game of screws. What do I do? Do I challenge him? Am I racist? Am I racist? Do I have an argument? Or do I agree with what I do say? <laughs> and get home. So I'm not going to tell you which one I chose because I don't think you would like me after. <laughs> but I just don't, I didn't feel, sometimes I don't feel like uh, fucking getting into a you know, crossfire with a cabbie. But anyway, what about when a, a cabbie will say something fucking, you didn't even, no one even know what the race is. You remember that? Because I tell you what, too many uh, people are, I tell you what the problem is. What, what? I'll tell you what the problem is. Too many brindle heads. <laughs> uh, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, I looked up brindle heads, nothing. Brindle, I'm trying to put everything down. What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, I've said some bad shit just to get home. <laughs> I remember one time I said, Yeah, you're right, you have the right idea. I agree. People always think that they, it's a funny thing. You know, you ever hear people go, it's time in this country, you always hear this on TV, time in this country we discuss racism. 
honestly and openly. Let's start. I'm not racist. What about you? Me neither. <laughs> Real honest there. America is racist, except these motherfuckers in the studio. I'd like it. It was like, okay, let's talk about racism in this country because it's a like me. I'm afraid of guys. But God damn, man, those black guys. You got everybody. Else. <laughs> and then you gotta leave the show now and never come back. When we said honestly, we didn't really mean honestly. <laughs> we meant say that you like every person. <laughs> That's how we get to the bottom. It's the only way we can change is if we all say we're not racist. Believe all women, you hear that? Tell. Most retarded fucking thing. I've heard some retarded things in my life, but believe all women? Are you out of your fucking mind? I mean, I've never met a woman that's lied, but I, I have to feel that some have. Never know a woman to lie. And I've talked to women and they've all said, oh no, women never lie. <laughs> Believe all oh, women. In the court of public opinion, that's the important thing, you know. Because you go, well, you gotta present the guy in the Well, you do know, maybe in the real court, but not in the court of public opinion. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, the most beloved book when I was a child, still is. It. It's called uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. You study To Kill a Mockingbird, you know the story? Beautiful, beautiful story. So, anyway, for those of you who don't know, it's about this guy, Tom, he's an African American. And uh, he uh, is accused of raping a white woman. And uh, so, uh, the, uh, the jury, the jury comes and, you know, they're all woke. <laughs> and the woman said, he raped me. So they believe her. <laughs> and uh, he goes away. And uh, then he's in a prison, you see. And then uh, Atticus Finch, where we played that, this guy's not woke at all. <laughs> Stand in front of the jail. Who shows up? The court of public opinion. And they go, let's get that fucking lynch up, you know? And we're going to this unwoke motherfucker. He's like, nah, nah, Because <laughs> that's what people don't understand. The court of public opinion is fucking shit. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> That's why we have a court of law to stop the fucking court of public opinion. And the reason is this. If you commit a crime, right, the entire, you ever hear about it? It's like, and now let's hear the state of, uh, of uh, Michigan versus Bill Johnson. You're Bill Johnson, right? Yeah? <laughs> it's not seem fair. It's not fair. State of Michigan has all kinds of money. Fucking can do anything they want. And the bill is a fucking meth addict that sucks guys out. You get more. Money. <laughs> so you got nothing on his set. Not fair. Not fair fight. So they throw him a couple of bones, and one is you don't have to say shit. But if you don't say anything, you're like, I must be guilty. The other is you presume him innocent. Now, here's what happens. If you presume someone innocent, you have to presume that the accuser is lying. You are mandated by law to believe no woman. Hmm. And this is why. 
Because if the woman loses, she goes and has a hammer. If the man loses, he goes to prison forever. Bill Cosby is in prison. Here's the funny thing about Bill Cosby. As I watched that courtroom, I don't think that motherfucker thought he was guilty. I swear to God, I don't know why. Maybe he got everything he wanted or something. And one time, he going into court, and they're like, where are you at, Mr. Cosby? And he said, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, well, he's kind of fat up. He had no idea. And I said, do you think he'd ever do stand up about it? Of course he wouldn't. But I think if he did, it would just be from a very, you know, he'd be like, here's the night, go into the, and the play, and the man, and the people. And then the man says, the United States of America versus Bill Cosby. I said, Camille, this is not going well. Crawl space. I'm like, crawl space. 
And how many men should know Corral Sticks? That's as bad as the woods. Then it worse and worse. Every time I go, I get some macaroni salad tonight. <laughs> and so there they were, in the middle of nowhere, father and son, going through a ritual as old as Abraham and Isaac. <laughs> Who do you choose? Your God. Couch. I remember one night I fucked my couch. 
Next day, I tell my friends, hey, I fucked my couch. They were like, what? That couch over there? I'm going to stay away from my fucking couch. <laughs> and you're young and insecure, you know. <laughs> but it's not my fault. It's just guys. You know, they're not fit. They're not set up right physiologically. Maybe with evolution or something. No, no. But fact is, they got two cocks. They got plenty of cocks. It's just they got no pussy. So they got a wild to improvise. <laughs> Lesbians, on the other hand, have no cocks at all. So when it comes time to fuck, like they can do all the stuff that straight people do before they fuck. That they're good at that. But then, when it comes time to fuck, you go, ah, we don't have a cock. <laughs> store bought cock, you know, we can use that. I don't care for a human cock. It makes me sick. But I do enjoy a store bought facsimile. Not their fault, man. I just, uh, just got unlucky. should have been born in a body where his ass was a pussy. <laughs> so anyways, I was wondering what I was. You know, I haven't had sex in a long time. I thought, what, what do I fuck? I fuck my own hand. I my hand. That's what I thought. I mean, there's a word for it, but, and I'll tell you something, it's not like I find my hand sexy. I'm not like, God damn, look at that. Why don't you fucking turn around for me, huh? Why? 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 I'm fucking now. I'm fucking good. Guys need this. And 
So what fascinates me is that this unreality that you can convince yourself is reality, and this reality that you can convince yourself is unreality, is, is something that even paranoid schizophrenics have trouble <laughs> reaching to that level, to the level where you actually produce issue Four seconds of issue that you spend the rest of your fucking life chasing. <laughs> and so what fascinates me, like I don't have a big imagination, so I can't whack off about Playboy girls or Victoria's you know, Secrets. You know. I've tried before, but it never works. Like I'm not. Now, I don't know if I believe it or not. Now, I even went to school, man, but 
this kid I know who went to college, psychiatry. I mean, psychiatry to this kid, right? Remember one time I was at a restaurant and I was drinking a glass of milk. He goes, you know why you like that milk, right, Norm? And I said, I know it's not because I enjoy milk. <laughs> and he said, no, I don't know, no. It's because you miss sucking on your mother's breast. I'm like, ah. Now you guys don't know what that My mother came from, came from a generation of women that will no longer be. And many of you here have mothers, or perhaps grandmothers, that fit this image. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mother who's in the kitchen, and everybody else is eating, and she's still, you know what I mean? Oh, my turnips! And, I, and, I, and she just eats us. Make sure everybody's well fed. Her eyes shine love, my mother. I've never heard utter an ironic thing in her life. Purely earnest person. And happy, you know, happy. She'll come back. She's 85 years old. She lives beside me. She'll come back. Snarl. I, I just met the most interesting lady, funniest story, man. I go, what She's like, she was going by a pineapple with a dollar six nine. Last week it was a dollar nineteen. I'm like, that's not a fucking story, old bag. I don't say that. <laughs> the point is, I would not trade places with them. And then I'm sitting there and there's a glass of milk there. After he said that, what am I supposed to guzzle down the milk? <laughs> Anyways. Oh, then it says, I forgot to tell you about When he when he ordered, right? He he ordered. You know what this guy orders? Two meatballs and a banana. Now I'm like, hey, wait a second, hold on. Just a second. What's good for the goose? <laughs> Psychology. And they say that you can have repressed memories. What that is, is the memories go back in your head and then 30, 40 years pass and then you remember, you know? It's always a bad memory. It's never. <laughs> it's never like, God damn, I used to like peach pies. <laughs> you got me a peach pie. Funny that I can remember. It's always just the most horrific, brutal, violent, sexual thing. Can't believe it. This is why it bothers me. Because I used to know things, but now I don't. Now I'm not sure because of all this. For instance, I used to say, like, I'd be at a party or something, and somebody would come up and go, hey, Norm, let me ask you a question. Did your uncle ever fuck your asshole? <laughs> and I would say with pride, no, he hasn't. You knew anything at all, but Uncle Jim, you wouldn't even answer that question. Or asked that. And I would be proud, filled with pride. But I can no longer say it. I can only say in honesty, if I'm confronted with that question, which I ask on a weekly basis. <laughs> All I can say is, because there's two options, right? Either my uncle didn't fuck me in the ass, or my uncle did fuck me in the ass, and I forgot. <laughs> It's 
So now I'm at a dinner party, guy goes, hey, Norm, let me ask you a question. Did your uncle ever fuck you in the ass? And I go, 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> it's milk, it's pure milk. I knew my advanced math degree would come in handy one day. <laughs> I experienced peace for the first time in my life a few months ago. I was at a party, and you know what? You know how I experienced peace? Because I just had this moment. I get so nervous in one on one situations, right? And my buddy, he told me, he said, the key is listening. That's what the key to conversation is. Problem is, that's what I'm best at. I can listen forever. But the problem is, that's not enough because eventually the motherfucker stopped talking. <laughs> and they went, like, ah! <sighs> I forgot to think of something to say. <laughs> you keep talking, and I swear to God, the next time you say, I have something to say. So it's not enough that you listen. You must do two things. You must listen. And then at the same time, you must, when it, the guy mentions anything that you know anything about, even remotely, like maybe he knows, maybe he mentions uh, Star Trek. And you go, God damn, I know shit about Star Trek. Very interesting trivia things about Star Trek. <laughs> excellent, excellent. As soon as this motherfucker stops talking, I will tell him my thing about Star Trek. <laughs> so this is what peace feels like. But then sometimes the guy changes the subject because you're, you know, you're peaceful, whatever he's going to do. And then he goes, do 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 so then the Panama Canal, whoa, whoa, No, I'm sorry. Ha, <laughs> ha, uh, Hey, it's very interesting what you're talking about now, but, uh, hey, hey, what about, uh, then? <laughs> Remember that? Before now? <laughs> yeah, you were talking about Star Trek. And, uh, here's an interesting thing about Star Trek. The, um, the spaceship on Star Trek was not actually called the Star Trek. <laughs> Public Enterprise. <laughs> okay, you talk for a while. And it's that easy. It's especially cool with the magic phone, you know what I mean? Because you can talk to anybody, you know, you'd be in a fucking party. You know, have you ever hear of a fellow named of uh, Pablo Picasso? In the old days, like, oh yeah, he's a middleweight, right? <laughs> well, you see now. They go, hey, what do you think of that? You ever hear of Pablo Picasso? Oh, of course I've heard of Pablo Picasso. I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta go to the bathroom. I have my magic phone. And uh, I studied Picasso. And then I come back, uh, 20 minutes or so. And I go, hey, fella. Listen, we're talking about Picasso, but I just wanted to say that uh, what I find most impressive about Picasso is his paintings. <laughs> this motherfucker can paint. <laughs> and also, do you remember earlier when we were talking about Al Pacino? He is an American actor. <laughs> Have all the money. 99% of 
percent don't have shit. You know what I believe? The 99 percent. Because why don't we go beat the fuck out of the one percent and take all their money? Seems relatively simple. Like there's 1,500 people here. Now let me not start with that. <laughs> I'm not one of the percent. I do have white privilege. <laughs> you know, this is what I believe. We are controlled by a white. What, by white men? White men own oh, this country. White men decide what happens in this country. White men are the most privileged and richest people in this entire country. That's a problem. But here's another problem. I'm a white man. <laughs> so I'm not to be helping. <laughs> You can hit me with a rock and shit, but I ain't hit myself with a rock, I tell you. <laughs> now I hear this woman say, I think it's time women were given power. You know? You ever think of something so stupid? Like, say, man, it's evil when white men, you know, control all the people. You know it would be good if white women controlled all the people. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the exact same fucking thing. Are people really that retarded? Yeah, maybe they are. I don't know. I don't know a goddamn thing. And yet, even though I, I don't know a goddamn thing, I feel nobody does. Nobody knows a fucking thing. You know? I remember when I was young, as a little boy, I just want to leave you with. But I often think back to this. I lived, uh, I, li I grew up on a farm, and then we moved to a small, small city. I mean, it's 100,000 people. Anyways, I was about six or seven years old, right? And I went out on my front lawn, and this is what I saw. I'll never forget this. A bus that said Carlton Place on it, number four, Carlton Place, drove up to the bus stop. At the bus stop stood four men with briefcases, right? And, and then this car was going, and the light was turning red and then green. People were seen to be in a hurry. And then I remember, as clear as day, and I think, and I was looking around, I was like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, so I went to my father and I said, hey, Dad, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and then my dad said, I'm going to go get some cheese. <laughs> he misunderstood the question I was asking. <laughs> he thought I meant him. And true to his word, he showed up with a block of cheese. <laughs> but that's not what I meant. I meant, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and in my head, I thought, one time, at some point in my life, in the future, somebody will come up to me, and I thought it was going to be those motherfuckers with the briefcases. <laughs> they seem to know. I thought, some motherfucker with briefcase in front of me, they know, uh, what, here's what's going on. I go, well, bad man, well now it all makes sense. So that's why everybody in the bus and shit, in Russia, right? that's why. Well now everything makes sense. So then, uh, now, four decades later, uh, nobody ever told me that fucking thing. <laughs> and I ask you, I say, and I'll ask you guys tonight, if you have any fucking idea of what's going on, <laughs> I'm telling you. Because I don't know. And nobody I know knows. Anarchy. I have beliefs, but I don't know. You know, everybody thinks.
thinks they're right. Think about that, right? In your heart, you think you're right, of course. In my heart, I think I'm right. But isn't that irrational? Wouldn't it be like 50-50? When you say, you know, I'm right about 50% of the shit. I'm dead wrong about the other 50%. Problem is, I don't know which I'm wrong about and which I'm right about, because then I could be right about 100%. So, I don't know a fucking thing. This guy don't know a fucking thing I'm talking to. So what do you say if you shut up and watch Matlock?